In this video, I'm going to talk about restoring a Windows server backup image from an iSCSI target using a boot CD or boot media. Now, as you may or may not know, this currently isn't possible with any of the Server 2008, Server 2012 um, recovery environments. There is no option to connect to an iSCSI target and restore a system image uh, with use, uh, using bare metal. I've taken the liberty of doing this uh, by following these instructions here that are posted on uh, a TechNet blog is because I actually need this for a couple environments that I manage. So I'm not going to show you how to do it. I will put the link in the description to this article. And I figure that this is something that may help some people if they're managing some servers and if they're uh, taking backups using the built-in Windows backup feature. At a high level there, you're going to need to understand Windows image environment the, or .wim files and how they sort of pertain to uh, boots, sort of rec uh, how they pertain to recovery environments. This is a good document that basically explains how this is going to be done. The high level approach, a couple things to note here, and there's a high level approach. A couple things to note here is this recovery environment that you're making that has iSCSI initiator support, you're going to always need the media of the OS that you're working with. So if you're using 2008, you need 2008 media. 2008 R2, 2008 R2 media, 2012, 2012 R2, and so forth. That's one thing. The second thing is you're going to need to uh, get a little bit familiar with the DSIM command as you are going to be uh, taking some CAB files as you read on, uh, taking some CAD files and injecting uh, certain uh, features into the recovery environment. You'll also need to download the ADK that matches your OS version. So that's uh, something else you're going to want to look at. For 2012 R2, it's the Windows 8.1. For Windows 7 and 2008, I believe it's a different version. You can just Google that by typing in a, uh, Windows ADK Windows 7 or Windows ADK Server 2012 R2 and it should take you to the direct to the correct download but just following some steps here what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your media so in my case it was 2012 R2 the recovery environment is inside the uh, media in the recovery folder but in order to get to that what's going to happen is you're going shh, what you're going to do is you're going to grab the install WIM from the installation DVD. You're going to create a mount directory. And with DSIM, you're going to extract win, winre.wim. You're going to extract the winre.wim file. This is the actual recovery image itself. Once you have that, um, you're going to copy some drivers and some system files from the original media so system you'll see here it says you know you're gonna get some files from system 32 you're gonna get some files from system 32 drivers you're gonna get some files from system, system 32 ENUS and what you're gonna do is basically you're gonna copy these files into a temporary directory and then after that you're gonna create a little batch file which initializes the network and runs the starts up the Microsoft iSCSI service and launches the iSCSI initiator as mentioned before when you download the ADK, the reason why you're doing that is because you're going to need to extract some CAD files from this directory after you've installed it, this winpe underscore OCS. Once you have all these files and you're ready to go, you're going to mount the winre uh, to obviously a mount point. You're going to, you're going to copy the iSCSI files that you have into, you know, the image, in the, into the images system32 directory. You're going to add your networking little batch file into system32 and you're going to add packages uh, from the ADK that you installed into the image. Once that's done, you're going to just unmount the image, commit the changes, and that's where you're going to need to uh, start looking at building an ISO enable, to enable booting from a machine or virtual machine or physical machine, however you want to do it. I did follow these. I, I did follow some of this for the ISO. I, I downloaded MDT. We'll get into that a little bit later. But that's the basic overview of this. I'm not. I'm not going to show you guys how to do this. Just give it a uh, take a stab at it, 
if this is something that you um, that this would benefit you at your job or for whatever reason or if you just have you know a lot of storage at home and you're connecting through iSCSI this is a great way to do backups to store backups and to retrieve backups how do how I created the ISO file and how really easy it could be um, I had a, some issues with it but I finally figured it out so when you're ready to go to the ISO stage you can obviously create the Bluebell ISO in whichever way you like in this case, I had some difficulties using some other software, so I actually ended up downloading the Microsoft MDT, which is the Deployment Toolkit. It's no longer supported by Microsoft, but if you go into Google and you type in MDT Download, you'll find uh, that you can still it's still available and you can still get it. If you've never used this tool before, it's not too hard to understand, but when you after you install it, you're going to see this screen here and you're going to see that there's an MDT deployment share uh, with a path to where you've told it to uh, save the boot files. What you're going to want to do is go down to operating systems and you want to right click and you want to click on import operating system. It's then going to come up with this and what you want to see is custom image file and add captured image WIM file. That's the key there. And what you do is you, you point it to your uh, source WIM file and it's going to go through these steps all the way till you're, it's confirmed. Now, when that once that's done, after you've gone through those steps, you want to go to the MDT uh, deployment share here, and you want to click on Update Deployment Share. That's going to create some bootable ISO files, such as the ones I have here. It'll create this Light Touch PE X64, Light Touch PE X86. From there, um, what I did, and you can do this a different way, is I just opened up the Light Touch PE X64, an ISO editor, such as uh, Power ISO. And you'll see that when you open that up, it's just, you'll see this, and you'll see this is basically just a boot, some boot files uh, to get the CD booting and, and bring it into the environment. If you click on Sources, you'll see that there's a boot whim. So that original file that we've been working with the whole time, the WinRE, and after we added everything that we needed to do by following the instructions before, you have a modified WinRE file. At that point, you can just rename it to boot.wim, and all you need to do literally is just um, take the uh, bootwim that you've created, the modified bootwim, and just literally just drag it over top of this bootwim, click on save, and at that point, you should have your ISO uh, ready to boot. The next step is obviously testing this out to make sure it all works. Now that we have our boot image, let's, let's try and boot this on a virtual machine. Go to VMware. I'm going to find my ISO file. We're going to attach it. We're going to power on the machine. And if everything works out, we should see booting here. Press any key to boot from CD, DVD, that's good. This is booting our uh, Windows mod our modified Windows recovery environment. And we're presented with choose a keyboard layout. Go to US, go to troubleshoot. We're gonna go to advanced options. We're gonna go to command prompt. Now, if we followed all the directions properly, all we need to do here is type in net DHCP. Once we hit enter, that's going to start the network, initialize it. It's also going to start the Microsoft iSCSI initiator service in the background, and it's going to launch the iSCSI initiator itself. From here, we just need to type in our target IP address to our iSCSI host. In my case, it's this. This is a free, in this case, it's a free NAS box. And it says inactive because I need to supply credentials. So I'm going to supply my credentials here, and now we have a status of connected. All you have to do is, at this point, just go into volumes and shares, and I just clip on. I just click on auto configure. That'll see the volume, and I'll hit OK. So now that we're done with that, all we have to do is just exit command prompt. That'll take us back to the menu, and from here we can just go troubleshoot, advanced, system image recovery. This is the operating system we're currently using. 
because it's based on this uh, recovery environment. And we get to this part here where it's asking us to re-image our computer from a bare metal state. And as you can see, it's already found the iSCSI target and it's already automatically populated one of the backups you already have there. So we can select multiple copies if we have those available and we can click on next and we want to format the partitions or we don't want to format the partitions uh, and we just basically go next all the way and this is I'm not going to do this because I've already re-imaged this before okay, I do uh, I can confirm it does work and works very well and that's pretty much it when you're done your machine will be rebuilt to the point in time with, that you've chosen through the um, Windows Backup Recovery Manager. So I hope this helps some of you guys. This is a great option uh, for small businesses, medium businesses, even large businesses. If you have enough storage on an iSCSI target and you set everything up properly, um, in, in, in any instance you can recover directly from the iSCSI target, save you time, save you money, save you some headaches. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.